Shane and Gypsy Kingdom, but Dulcify well clear. Brent Thompson going for his fourth Cox plate, and he's got it. He's home, Dulcify. He's six lengths in front of Chivalry, and then after Shane imposing stopping, Dulcify's won by a minute, and that's the way he might win the Melbourne Cup. Dulcify by six lengths to Chivalry. My uh, thought process on riding that um, uh, type of race from the 2000 at the Valley is that I never wanted to be further than one off the fence. Maybe on the fence if I had to, but one off the fence on a, in a race such as that to, to have options. Again, he had the ability to switch off at the drop of a hat, so you know, I knew if I had to sort of fire him up a little bit, he was going to switch off when, when I dropped my hands down on his neck, and that's the way he, he always worked. I, I knew I was on the best horse, so it was just a case of, uh, you know, um, getting a clear run from about the 800 metre mark. You know, he, he, he just sort of had that turn of foot where you could, as, a, as I say, if you needed to use a bit of petrol, you know, you just, he's like driving a Porsche, put, press the foot and the turbo came, came in. <laughs> Oh, Dulcify let go as race to the lead. Shivery's getting off the fence, but Dulcify's going to have a big lead on it. At the 400, Dulcify shot away two and a half lengths imposing. Extraordinary thing happened, and, and never before had, had I ever witnessed it or did I ever after. All of a sudden, uh, Dulcify just absolutely took off. Um, you know, it was like being a passenger. I always say there was lots of things racing through my mind was I hope he's uh, as good as I think he is because I'll be looking for a job on Monday morning if he gets beat in this. But Dulcify well clear, Brent Thompson going for his fourth Cox plate. He was uh, unbeatable the way he just sort of let, let go, you know, and it was quite scary really. On the very day of the Cox plate that he, that he won, um, he ran a faster last 600 than they did in the Moya Stakes. And he's at the end of uh, 2,000 metres and they're at the end of uh, 1,000 metres. So that was, that, that was an explosive uh, acceleration that he had. And, uh, you know, of all the great horses that I rode, even rode some brilliant sprinters and uh, overseas, I don't think there was anything that would come, come near to him. That's why I do say that in this day and age, if he, he, was, if he was hypothetically a, a four year old today, you'd, you'd have no trouble at all putting him on a plane to take on the best. Colin Hayes always rated him without a shadow of a doubt that he's the most exciting best horse he ever trained. He was a sensational galloper and uh, I think that Cox Plate win uh, was uh, the most uh, convincing and best win that I've ever seen in a Cox Plate. That's quite an accolade um, to be put on a horse like him. It's uh, still amazing to re relive it because I can remember every uh, every meter of it makes the hairs on your back uh, sort of stand up you know and 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 also largely because of, of Bill Collins's call was one of the great calls of the Cox Plate uh, so uh, yeah it's uh, it's incredible but but you can you know you can pit his race against uh, all the all the great races and and uh, you know people can choose to which one they like like best but you know you'd have to be up there amongst the uh, best Co Cox Plate scene. I was uh, thinking I owned the race by that time, you know, the third, third uh, Cox Plate win in, in four years. Then I'm riding the best horse I've ever sat on and, and uh, I was pretty com confident. And, and uh, the way he won it, well, you know, that sort of blew everyone away. So it was outstanding. Dulcify, without a doubt, was the best horse I rode, yeah, no question. Yeah, have no doubt in my mind.